Hello everyone, welcome to yet another video in Dr. Nikita's Rat Synapse. And our today's topic of discussion is a very, very important topic that is ossification centers. So many students have been requesting for it and that's the reason that I've come up with this video. But then not to bombard you with all the ossification centers at one go, today in this video, I'm be concentrating on the ossification centers of the elbow particularly. So why is it important to know the ossification centers, which center appears at what age and when does it fuse? It's important first of all for bone age estimation whether the bone growth is normal or whether it's a delayed bone age and the second to know whether you know there's some uh, fracture which has occurred for example say that there is a structure a and there is a structure b structure a appears before structure b the ossification center for a appears before b but in the x-ray you can see the structure b but you're not able to see structure a that means this structure a has gone somewhere from its normal site that means there is an aversion fracture of that structure we will see those examples with the radiographs that will make things more clear with you. So let's get started with our today's discussion on the elbow ossification centers. So in the elbow ossification centers, as I said, we will be learning the humerus. We will be learning the four ossification centers for humerus. That is the capitulum, the trochlea, the medial epicondyle and the lateral epicondyle. And we would be le learning one ossification center each for radius, that is the radius head, and for the ulna, that is the olecranon process. So first, I want all of you to be clear with these terms. What is capitulum? What is trochlea? Where do we locate the structures? So trochlea, remember, it is the part of the humerus which is close to the ulna. So trochlea T and ulna, they go together, all right? So, so trochlea and ulna, they go together. So as you see here, in this image, this is the ulna, and that's the radius bone. This part of the humerus close to the ulna, that's the trochlea. And this part becomes the capitulum, that is close to the radius. So if trochlea is to ulna, capitulum is to radius. And of course, then we have this, since this is the olecranon process of ulna, this becomes the medial epicondyle. And this here becomes the lateral epicondyle, that is close to the radius, that's the lateral aspect. The radius head and the olecranon help us to establish the lateral side and the medial side in the elbow x-ray. That is how we identify them. The next thing that we need to know is what is the chronological order of the ossification center? So we said there are six ossification centers, four for the humerus, one for radius, one for ulna. So the mnemonic to be remembered is crito. The mnemonic to be remembered is crito. That means first is capitulum, then is your radial head, then is your internal epicondyle, then is the trochlea, then is the olecranon, and then is the external epicondyle. Internal epicondyle means the medial epicondyle. External epicondyle means the lateral epicondyle. So remember this mnemonic, crito. That is how the ossification centers appear. And easy to remember the age, it's the odd numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 6 ossification centers, crito. Now how do we identify them on the radiograph? So here you see on this radiograph, this is the radial head. So that's the radial head. This is the ulna here. Radial head ke upar is your capitulum. So that becomes your lateral epicondyle. Here you have the trochlea, the olecranon process. And that is what you have here, the medial epicondyle. We'll see the radiographs to get much better clarity on this. Now, if you get an image in your exam, which is very commonly asked, normal radiographs, the anatomy to be identified, what do these structures represent? So let us see the structures. So this structure here, which you see here, let us see the first structure, structure A, that's the radius. So that becomes the radius head. So close to the radius head, that will be the capitulum. So B is capitulum. C is, this is the lateral side radius, so lateral epicondyle. Here we see what we see here D. D becomes your medial epicondyle because this is the ulna, so the medial side. And E, this ossification center here, that becomes the trochlea. So that is how you identify the structures on the radiograph. Going to the next image here. Now, if you are given this radiograph in your exam and you are asked what is the bone age, what is the approximate bone age from this? So look at the ossification center. Now, in this radiograph, what we see is that's the radius there. This bone is the radius. So this ossification center, which has appeared, that's a humerus ossification center. That's not the radius head. So close to the radius, so that is the capitulum. So crito. 1. C is 1. So this is approximately 1 year. This is approximately 1 year. That is what we see here 
the crito. The next thing that we see here in this radiograph, this is what you see here, that's the radial head. So the next is CR. So the approximate age becomes here, 3 years. So that's the radial head that we see here. That's the radial head that we see there, right? The next thing to be, to be looked for, CRI, the internal epicondyle. So what we look, what we have a look at this here is, this is where we see, this is where we see the internal or the medial epicondyle. So that is where in this radiograph we see the internal or the medial epicondyle. So this becomes 5 years, CRI135. The next thing that we would be seeing here is, this ossification center here, that's the trochlea. That's the trochlea there, right? That's the trochlea. So 1357. Now, what else do we have a look at here? That's the olecranon process there above the trochlea. So that's the olecranon process. So C-R-I-T-O and the next we see here, this ossification center here, that is the external epicondyle. So that is what we see there in that region. That's the external epicondyle there, which is the lateral epicondyle, the last to appear at the age of 11 years. Now, if you get a question that out of the four ossification centers for humerus, which three join to form a conjoint epiphysis of humerus? Which one does not contribute to conjoint epiphysis? So remember that it's the medial epicondyle which does not contribute to the conjoint epiphysis. The rest of the three, that is your capitulum, the trochlea and the lateral epicondyle, they together form the conjoint epiphysis which then fuses to the humerus shaft while your medial or the internal epicondyle here which you see here, it fuses with humerus shaft separately. The rest of them, the rest of them, that is your external epicondyle, the capitulum and the trochlea, they form a conjoint epiphysis at the age of around 13 years, right? So please remember this important MCQ that can be asked that medial epicondyle does not form the conjoint epiphysis. Now let's go ahead to our next images here. So just a quick review again for the images here. You can see that this is where you see the radius. So that's the capitulum. So that becomes the external epicondyle here. The trochlea there, above the trochlea is your olecranon and this becomes your medial epicondyle which does not contribute to the conjoint epiphysis. Now what are the clinical applications of this? Now, this is a child, a 12-year-old child with a history of injury while playing. Do you think there's something abnormal in this radiograph? So, how do we evaluate this radiograph is? This structure which you see there above the radius head, this structure, that's the capitulum. So, that's the capitulum there. So, we see the ossification center for capitulum, right? The next thing we also see here, the radial head. So, that's the radial head that we are seeing there. Then we see what is this structure here? That's the trochlea. That's not the medial epicondyle. The medial epicondyle should come here, but we are seeing the trochlea. So this is breaking our sequence of ossification centers. Crito, we said CRI, then T. But we are seeing T, but we are not seeing I, that is the internal epicondyle. So that tells us that the internal epicondyle, there is avulsion fracture. That means the medial epicondyle is avulsed and it has gone somewhere. Let us see the rest of the structures also. This structure which we see here, that's the external process. So we are seeing all the ossification centers except the internal or the medial epicondyle. So that tells us that this is an avulsion fracture of the medial epicondyle. So where is the medial epicondyle? So this rounded structure here which we see, that's the medial epicondyle which has shifted from its normal position here to here. So that's the avulsion fracture. So this is how it is very important to identify the avulsion fractures, medial epicondyle, very common in pediatric elbow x-rays. Let us see some other example as well. Now this is again a child. This is a child who has come again with a history of injury while playing. This is a three-year-old child. What do we see in this child? What ossification centers do we see? So this ossification center which we see here, this is the radius, that's the ulna, so this becomes the capitulum. So we are seeing the capitulum, so we know it's more than one year. Even the radial head is not well seen here, it's not well seen the ossification center for radial head. So maybe it's between one to three years is the bone age because even the radial head is not well seen. But here we see on the lateral side, there is a small bone fragment. Alright, so we said this is capitulum. That's the small bone fragment here which is there and we know that that is the location of external epicondyle. 
but after the capitulum comes the radial head and not the external epicondyle so please do not get confused that this is the normal external epicondyle the sequence should follow crypto so that helps us to identify that there is a fracture at the lateral end the lower lateral end of humerus it's a fracture it's not a normal lateral epicondyle so this is very very important to understand i hope this is clear that why it's important to understand the ossification centers when do they appear and how to identify the fractures which can otherwise be missed if we do not know the ossification centers so if you want to watch some more videos on ossification centers and the bone age estimation do let me know in the comments i shall definitely come up with more such videos on various ossification centers in rest of the joints that's all for today signing off dr nikita here keep studying keep revising and keep winning